Every atom you possess has almost certainly passed through several stars and been part of millions of organisms on its way to becoming you. We are each so atom atomically numerous and so vigorously recycled at death that a significant number of our atoms, up to a billion for each of us, it has been suggested, probably once belonged to Shakespeare. A billion more each came from Buddha and Genghis Khan and Beethoven and any other historical figure you care to name. The personages have to be historical apparently as it takes the atoms some decades to become thoroughly redistributed. However much you may wish it, you are not yet one with Elvis Presley. And it was just sort of amazing because I was thinking about the Bovi, um, tra you know, the, the Bovi Basin basically that's been, that's been there for 35 years million years and that is I think I don't know if there's any scientists here but it's a kind of around the time that mammals started appearing so while we have been popping and oozing and turning into different things this clay that you hold in your hands has just been there kind of hanging out yeah, that's amazing So, I am going to throw a pot on the wheel. The clay that you, as I said, the clay that you've actually got in your hands is from Totnes. The clay that I have here is actually, um, in fact, I'm going to start with. Um, this clay is from Dartington, from Clay Lane. Um, it's, it's, there are interesting qualities about them because wherever you go, the clay is very, very different. And the clay, I don't know if you, I don't, I don't know if, the clay that you're holding your hands at the moment, it, it, it lacks elasticity. Yes, great. So, um, and it's, it's just, and it's interesting because, yes, you can throw with it, these are ones I threw earlier. That's terrible, isn't it? But um, I tried to make a handle on it. And it just, it could not hold its shape. So that's, um, that's top nest clay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Whereas Dartington clay <laughs> is interesting. Because Dartington clay is very, very fine. And it's really hard to work with. No joke, really, seriously. <laughs> what makes it more difficult to work with? It's very, very fine. It's very, the clay is really, really fine. Yeah. So it, it's, it just sort of, yeah, moves a lot more. So it's quite difficult. This is Umbacoon clay. This is great. Really good clay to work with. And this is, I don't know if, you, any if you've ever been to Organic Arts, just outside Exeter, this is clay from that. You can't really see it in this light, but they are all slightly different colours, which is nice. And I don't know if you can actually see that this is very, very, it's actually sort of like, almost like a mustard colour. So, um, 20 years ago, I became a potter. And a phrase that came up a few years ago for me, um, which kind of really resonated with the reason why I became a potter, was the one that's at the top here, and I'll read it to you. And it says, to become a professional craftsman is a radical decision, often undertaken as a, as a form of protest against a dehumanising environment and way of life. And actually, for me, that was really true. Yeah, it's really true. That, that sometime when I was a, you know, a teenager, and at the time it was the 70s and 80s, so the environmental movement was, you know, for us it was you know, the ozone layer and all the different things that were happening. And there was just such a big part of me that was just going, you know what, I really don't want a nine to five job. You know, I don't, you know, I've had enough of school, I've had enough of having to turn up and all that sort of stuff. So it, it really was like, I don't want to be a part of this anymore. So I became a potter. <laughs> See it, can't you? 
Okay. Lou, this is when you really should have the music going. Okay, when I'm teaching, I say, and now you pull the clay up into a lovely cone shape. <laughs> He's not behind me. So I'm just centering the clay. And there's, um, I was looking through the Bible the other day, and I was looking for a quote, you know, where it always talks about, you know, as, as the potter moulds the clay, so God moulds you. And, yeah, thank you, whoever that was. <laughs> and I would just like to say, that's just rubbish, really. Because when you're working with material, and it can be any material, it can be clay, or it can be metal, wood, whatever, you learn that it's a relationship. It's not about domination and control, because actually, you, actually, you just have to go with it. Because when you start forcing the material, it's, it's a funny thing, because actually, um, apart from anything, you just end up exhausting yourself. You also end up with things like, you know, getting a bad back and stuff like that. Repetitive strain. As I shape the clay, the clay shapes me. What I really wanted to say at the beginning, before I got distracted by all the lights and things like that, was that, you know, I don't really want to dazzle you with my intellectual brilliance this evening. And I also don't really want to impress you with my pot making abilities because there are many people who are much, much better than I am. But actually, what I'm really interested in doing this evening is just speaking from the heart. Speaking from, you know, potters and craftspeople generally don't talk. We, you know, we are in our little studios making, having this relationship with material, which actually is something that's so important and something that's so fundamental. I believe it's fundamental to the sustainability movement, you know, at the moment. But the thing is, we don't come out and say it. And so this evening, this is about me stepping out and kind of saying, you know, something that happens here, something that happens with material, something that happens with clay, it's just very, very important. <coughs> it's about the only time when plastic is actually useful. <laughs> So with this particular clay, it's incredible, it's so soft. Now remember this is Dartington clay.
It's not so easy throwing with a shaking hand. I think the blurb actually said I was going to make a mug or something, but I thought that was a bit boring. Sorry? <laughs> David's been making mugs for a long time. <laughs> There's actually, I don't know if, if any of you have re re read The New Materialism, it's Ruth Potts and um, Andrew Sims have put this thing together and it's all about craft. And uh, I really, I've, I've taken a bit out of it because I really like it. Um, it's actually talking about um, stone, you know, stone masonry. And it says, I want, if you want to define a letter the moment that you push on the pencil or use it aggressively, it breaks. You learn to keep the point by not using force. Don't force, let it be. Yeah. Don't force, let it be. The secret to the stonemason's craft lies in understanding and working with material, not dominating it. It leads to an acute understanding of both the limits and potential of the material world. So, um, I mean, a lot of you don't know me at all, so what I wanted to do also was just say that um, I, I work with material, but I also work with people. So I, um, um, I have what's called a portfolio career. So I, I teach, I facilitate, I make. Actually, I build as well. Um, but mainly I am a maker and an artist. Um, I work with, um, with adults, with people with learning disabilities, with young offenders, um, within mental health. And what, one of the things I really want to, to talk about this evening is actually the relationship between, or well, my relationship with material, and then my relationship with people. And there is, um, there's a quote, in fact someone's got it here, it's a Senate quote. Um, yeah, it's this one. I wonder if you could read it out for me. <laughs> no? Is anybody willing to read this out? Yes? Great. Thank you. Material challenges like working with resistance or managing ambiguity are instructive in understanding the resistances people harbour to one another or the uncertain boundaries between people. I stress the positive open role, routine, and practicing play in the work of crafting physical things. So too, do people need to practice their relations with one another, learn the skills of anticipation and revision in order to improve these relations. I argue no more or no less than the capacities our bodies have to shape physical things are the same capacities we draw, we draw on in social relations. And this is from Senate, 2008. That's great. Thank you. Okay, so the skills in, used in making are the same skills used in relating to each other and in community. I would actually go one step further and say that the same applies to ideas as well. You know, when you have an idea, um, that there are various processes that goes through that relates to, to making too. Um, I'm going to throw another pot, is that all right? So, so 
This is um, Eid Clay. This is from Exeter. So I'm not suggesting that, I mean, with relationships that you start um, quite this intimately, really. But there is something about when you first put clay on the wheel, you are, you're getting to know your material. Every time you put another piece of clay on the wheel, which in, with a production potter, they might do 100 of these a day. And every time you do, you're getting to know your material. You're looking for lumps and bumps, anything that's actually in the clay, quite often stones, things like that. Um, and it is, it's, it's the same like with us in relationship, or it's the same when you have an idea, you know, you, you, you mull it around, you, you think about it. Once you've kind of established, okay, so I can work with this, because actually quite often at this stage, sometimes something will happen, you think, you know, this is unworkable. And so you get rid of the clay and you start with something else. But this one's workable. So I'm going to open it out. So when you're actually opening it out, you're deepening the relationship. You're finding out that little bit more about it. And with an idea as well, you, sort of, you work at it, any idea that you have. And then you start to thin it. And this is, you know, you're really, really testing your material now. You're testing your relationship. Maybe you've actually, in a, I don't know, love relationship, just gone past the honeymoon period or something like that. Or, you know, you go past that sort of euphoric stage when you meet someone, you know, you meet a friend that's just amazing. And then, and then things just begin to happen, you know? And then the thing is what happens is that you, you find limitations. Now with clay, it's an easy one. With clay, as long as you follow the, its laws, you'll be all right. But I think with people, it's just harder to gauge, really. But there's something in, there's something in the whole process of actually really um, being what, with what is, what is in this moment, what is in this material, what is in this relationship, what is in this establishment I'm working with, you know, should, could, ought, it ought to be like this, life should be like this, and it actually it isn't. And, I mean, I find this myself, you know, I'm generally, I'm very accepting When I'm working with people with learning disabilities, you know, you get to know them and you get to understand their limitations. And I can really do that. I can really, really go with that. But when sometimes, you know, when it's a normal, you know, when it's like a friend, I find myself just not being quite that 
forgiving. Really. And what would it actually really be like if I take someone or something exactly as it is and learn to accept its limitations the way I learn to accept the limitations of when I'm working with clay. And then, and then of course you can really get somewhere. They're sort of finishing off, those sort of final fine tunings are usually what takes so much time. can actually, you know, that this has just been dug straight from the ground. I sort of wonder, you know, that I teach sort of clay winning, which is actually, you know, going out and sort of finding clay and things like that, you know, and to me it's like, well, you know, of course there's clay in the ground, you know, of course we can use it. But I'm, I'm always sort of, I mean, I know that because I'm a potter, but actually, but I, I keep thinking of radical amazement. I don't know if you, any of you remember Wayne when he was working here, he was like, prepared to be radically amazed by a tomato, you know. And, um, yeah. It's lovely when you see radical amazement on people's faces when they just dig out a piece of clay and, you know, within a very short amount of time, they have something that's usable. You do sieve it. Yes, you do. It's quite laborious. You can actually see where the two clays are sort of mixing a little bit there. actually done you know the little brown bits of paper I am going to um, ask some of you to read that in a minute the other thing is, is that when you know when you're actually working with clay when you're working with any kind of material at all you become you very quickly become aware of embodied energy you become aware of how long everything takes you to do because you're doing it yourself. It's very, very different from switching on a light or starting your central heating up, anything like that. When you're working with clay, you know, every time you have to recycle a piece of clay, you know, that can take up to, you know, half an hour or something. You know, and then in the next class, somebody uses it and chucks it straight back in the, <laughs> in the recycling bin. You think, God, that's, you know, and there's just this sense of, the energy that it takes when you're working with it all the time. You know, you find the clay, in the case of these, you find the clay, you, you sieve the clay, you make the pot, you make the handle, you let it dry, you fire it, you glaze it, you fire it again, then you need to find somewhere to actually sell it. You know, this is, this is real, you know. And then, and then I go into somewhere like Asda's, and there's, there's like, there's a cup, for 35p, you know, it's like, it just makes me want to cry. You know, I mean, the packaging would have been more than that, you know, it's, it's just this, this kind of, you know, when you're actually really working with it, and the preciousness as well, you know, the preciousness of, of when you're working with it as well. 
um, one of the things which, you know, it's, it's really, I mean, for, for a maker, it's lovely. I mean, I uh, had a, somebody came back to me when I was at a market last year and um, they picked up one of my pots and they said, you know, I bought a pot of yours last year and I touch it every day, you know. And, and because the pot, I mean, because that work, it has soul. And I've been mean, thinking, again, you know, sort of like we, we talk about processed food. I mean, we talk a lot about processed food and how it's not, it's not good for us. But I would also say that processed things, the objects that we have around us that have gone through too many stages are not good for us either. And actually, the more that we can enrich our lives by having pieces around us that tell a story, that have been upcycled, that have been, that have been handed down, anything like that, is so, it's good for our soul, it's good for us inside, and makes us feel happier. There's this really lovely quote, I think it's from, um, it's actually, sorry, I'll, I'm really picking on the audience tonight, I apologise for that. Um, it's um, Forrest Carter, little, uh, no, Forrest Carter, little tree, has anyone got that one? You, can you, could you read it out for me? Grandma's name was Billy Bee, I knew that when I heard him late at night say, Akinya, Billy Bee, and then I saw him And I really, I really love that, you know, the, the fact that love and understanding are, for them, it's the same, you know, to really, you know, when, when we're talking about working with material, to understand it, it takes a lifetime's exploration. And also in relationship, you know, love and understanding, I understand you, I love you, you know, when we're relating to each other and we're in, in community. And the reason I am talking about community is when I first when I first came here, it was when Transition Town first started up. And all, every single speaker that I heard speak said, "We need to learn to live in community. We need to learn how to relate to each other." And and it really struck with me how you know because actually, you know, at that time I was just you know I just thought how on earth you know. Can we do that? So I think that working with material is something that we used, to, we used to do every day. We used to be with all the time. And it's something that gradually we've, we have moved away from, you know. And so, I mean, I know Satish often writes about the fact, you know, he says, just bake bread, you know. Bake bread, make a pot, go and work in the garden do anything like that to actually really um, connect again. And for me, when I work with material, what I'm learning and, and how it helps me to, to learn to be with people is you're learning to work with resistance. You're learning to work with failure. There is an ability to see it through. You're holding on to a vision you're going from, I can't do this, to I can. 
it's an amazing thing that when you, um, you know, quite often when I work with women and we're, we're outside firing and we're using gas kilns and stuff, and, and, and it's interesting because as soon as there's, sorry guys, but as soon as there's a guy there, he steps in and will do all that, you know, because that's, you know, and we, us women, we're kind of going, ah, you know, and actually when it is just women, when they step up and they do that stuff, you know, and they become, at the end of the day, they become fire gods, you know. They're working with really hot, hot stuff. It's a thousand degrees, you know. And the confidence that comes and the, the being empowered. I can change this. I can change this from I can't, you know. The world is too big, but actually just in this little thing, I can change this. Working with limitations and boundaries. You, and also you're exploring your own limitations too, because actually sometimes you're finding you come up against stuff that you really can't do or work with, and that's also really important. And for me, the most important is working with what is, what actually is, just in, in the different clays that I'm using tonight. I'm, actually, I'm really working with what is. I'm working with clay that's just not very elastic. I'm working with clay that's, that's very, very soft. I'm working with clay that's brilliant to work with. All these different things and all the, you know, and what all that different stuff teaches us. So it's not working with what we want to be working with, it's what, working with actually what actually is. Yeah. Has anyone got a quote that hasn't been read out yet? I think there, there is some around. Yeah? Oh, great. Well, I had to. <laughs> Would you like to, could you read it? We may say, therefore, that modern technology has deprived man of the kind of work that he enjoys most. Creative, useful work with hands and brains and given him plenty of work of a fragmented kind, most of which we do not enjoy at all. It has multiplied the number of people who are exceedingly busy doing kinds of work which, if it is productive at all, is so only in an indirect or roundabout way. Much of which would not be necessary at all if technology were rather less modern. Karl Marx appears to have foreseen much of this when he wrote, they want production to be limited to useful things, but they forget that the production of too many useful things results in too many useless people. <laughs> and there's another quote around somewhere, yeah? Our job, every single one of us, is to cherish whatever in the human heritage we love and to feed it and keep it going and pass it on. Because this, because this dark age isn't going to go on forever. And when it stops, those people are going to need the pieces that we pass on. They're not going to be able to build a new world without us passing on whatever we can ideas, art, knowledge, skills, or just plain old fragile love. How we treat people, how we help people, that's something to be passed on. Kelman and Ventura, 1993, page 233. Yes. That is, um, we've had a hundred years of psychotherapy and the world is getting worse. It's good, it's a great book. You should read it. Very good. And the other, what I would like to actually finish with is, is, is while I was actually putting this together, was, was really thinking about, um, and I think, I mean, for me, I can quite easily get overwhelmed by what's happening in the world and um, what am I doing, all that sort of stuff. 
But what actually really came to me when, when I was doing this was actually that I feel hopeful. I feel hopeful. I don't feel, I don't feel despair. Because actually, the more I listen to the material that I'm working with, to the people that I'm working with, to the not knowing that it's, we're in a place, or I'm in a place of not knowing. It's a little bit, you know, it is like the creative process when you begin something, not knowing where it will lead. But actually, you know it's going to lead somewhere, and you know you'll get through it as well. And that's just really powerful, you know. Yeah. So is, um, is there any more? There's no more quotes, is there? Oh, you've got one. Oh, this is great. Is that Marianne? Yeah, it is great. It's good. <laughs> the satisfaction comes through the use of every part of oneself, hand and eye, brain and intuition, and through being always in contact with natural materials and the power of earth, air, fire, and water. <laughs> it is, in fact, a voyage of discovery into the very heart of things. How lucky we are. Yeah. Marianne, yeah, she's a hundred this year. Yeah. And then I'll finish with this one, and that is oh, one more. Oh. <laughs> That was in Memories, Dreams and Reflections, I think one of his best pieces of you know, best writings. And then this is, the goal of life is to make your heart beat, match the beat of the universe, to match your nature with nature. Joseph Campbell. Okay. I think that's it. <laughs>